Hey everybody, so in this next series of videos we're going to be looking at section 10.4, trigonometric identities. We've looked at a few groups of identities already, but in 10.4 we, uh, we get an, uh, a larger sampling of some identities that we're going to we're going to want to use here in, in Math 151. So let's set out some goals here. Uh, first, we're going to look at six new groups of identities. Uh, the even and odd, co-function, sum and difference, double angle, power reducing, and half angle identity formulas. And we're also going to look at some examples of how they can be used. Uh, lots of applications for these and we're just going to kind of hit a few that will be important um, immediately to us in pre-calculus and then maybe early on in, in calculus as we get there. So we've seen, we've seen some of these identities so far. So if we think, and these are probably in your notes already, but so far uh, we've seen three groups of, of trigonometric identities. And they are the reciprocal identities, the quotient identities, and the Pythagorean identities. So we've got these right here. And as we can see with these, really what we're doing with trig identities is trying to relate a trig function of some angle with another trig function. Sometimes theta stays the same, sometimes that angle will change as we, as we see with some of the further ones. But it's a really a way of relating trig functions with other ones for, for convenience or out of necessity. So these are the ones we've got and now we're going to look at uh, six, new, six new groups of these. So for the first one, um, I'd like to consider the following situation. So if we were to consider the following. Let's uh, let's consider some angle of rotation. So if we were to draw an xy axis here, so we've got x and y, and we were to rotate some line with a radius of r, uh, a given angle theta. It doesn't really matter what theta is, let's go ahead and put this in the first quadrant here just so we can see. Now we know in talking about the unit circle and in reference triangles that if we were to think about the point that that angle would intercept on uh, the circle that it traces. We know that that coordinate would be the coordinate x, y. It would have some x and some y value. We also know that if we were to consider the cosine of that angle theta that we just rotated, it would be the ratio between the x-coordinate and whatever the length of r may be. And similarly for the sine of that angle theta, we define that as the y-coordinate divided by whatever our radius is. So we talked about this earlier in section 10.2. So what I want to consider next is, well, what if we took what if we took that r and rotated it almost the exact same angle theta, except we're going to rotate that negatively. So we're going to take r and rather than rotate it positive theta, we're going to rotate it negative theta which in this particular case means it's going to fall down in the fourth quadrant. So if it was 30 degrees before, now it's negative 30 degrees. So we're going to put it right down there. Now let's think about what this coordinate would be. It's going to be some x and y point. Specifically, since we're down right below, we've rotated right below, that x coordinate is going to stay the exact same. So it'll always be x. However, since we've rotated negatively, we can see that that y coordinate is going to be just about the same quantity except in this case it's going to be negative so we'd write that as negative y so that's the relationship between these two points when we go from an angle theta to an angle negative theta so what does this imply in terms of how we would find the cosine and sine of that angle negative theta well if you were to take the cosine of negative theta well it's still the same x coordinate and it's still the same r radius. Whereas for the sine, if we were to take the sine of negative theta, that's going to be minus y now divided by, divided by r. So we notice how these relate. Um, taking the cosine of theta or of negative theta will result in the same value. Um, so this is the, the same that we would have gotten if we taken the cosine of minus theta. Whereas the sine if we take negative y over r, that'll end up being minus sine of positive theta. So we see how these, how these relate. Now, the reason that we bring this up in terms of the even and odd identities is what we've done here, and you may not see it right away, but we've 
now brought up an idea that we talked about in section 1.6. So if you go back to section 1.6, we talked about this idea of taking a function, evaluating it at a negative version, and seeing what happens in the resulting function. Um, what we've seen here with the cosine is the cosine is our function f. We're evaluating it negative, a negative input, negative x. And the result is we get f of x back, unchanged. And what we said is that this meant that we have an even function. So if you evaluate a function at positive x or at negative x, you get the same output. You've got an even function. Whereas if you were to take our function, evaluate at negative x like we were at the sign, and what you get back is a minus version of that function, then we call this an odd function. And this is what gives us the idea of the even and the odd identities here. Now we could continue this through and do uh, and do an examination of the secant, the cosecant, tangent, and cotangent, but we don't really need to do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of bring in the the list of identities. So if if we looked at all of the the possibilities here, we'd see that we have the following list of of identities for the even and odd ones. So how can we see how this this might work out to our advantage if we wanted to to use these. Uh, let's try let's try an example or two here. So let's say for an example I wanted to find the sine of oh I don't know minus 135 degrees. Now we've got a few different ways we could do this. We could actually sketch out an angle of rotation of negative 135, or maybe this might be a good opportunity for us to, to see how the even odd identities work in our favor. So if we look at the even odd identity for the sine of minus some angle theta, we know that this should end up being minus the sine of positive 135 degrees. And we know that the sine of 135 is that angle in the second quadrant, and that's going to be the square root of 2 over 2. So this identity tells us that the sine of minus 135 is actually going to be minus the square root of 2 over 2. You might have other ways of figuring this out, and that's great. Um, but this is, this is one way we could use these identities. Let's take a look at another one. Let's say we had the cosine of let's take minus 11 pi divided by 6. So again, let's go ahead and consider the, the even and odd identity here. So the cosine of a negative angle is going to end up being equal to the cosine of the positive version of that, of that angle. And we can evaluate this, and cosine of 11 pi over 6 it's that uh, 30 degree reference angle in the fourth quadrant, which is going to give us a value of the square root of 3 over 2. So these are just a couple examples that we can see of, of using the even end and the odd identities. Okay, so let's, let's look, move, move on to the next group. What if we were to consider this? Um, if we consider... Let's draw a right triangle here just to kind of get this started. So let's say we've got a right triangle and it's labeled accordingly. So we'll go ahead and label this A, side B, and side C. Let's call this acute angle here theta and we're gonna call this angle up at the top phi. So that's phi. So we know a few things about this already. This is where we started with trig functions. If we were to look at theta, first and we were to consider well what's the sine of theta well we know that the sine of theta is going to be the ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse so that's going to be a divided by c uh, so that was easy enough let's do a few more what if we looked at the secant of theta well, we know that the secant is going to be the ratio between the hypotenuse and the adjacent side, so that would be C over B. 
And one last one, let's say we were to look at the tangent of that angle theta. Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that would be A over B. So that's easy enough. That's just basic stuff from section 10.2. What we want to consider here is that, well, what if, what if we changed our attention to phi? Rather than looking at theta, what if we changed our, uh, uh, moved our attention to phi? Well, the reference to phi, if we looked at the ratio between A and C, like we have with the sine of theta, A is now our adjacent side, C is the hypotenuse. So the sine of theta, which is A over C, is also going to give us the same uh, result if we were to take the cosine of phi. And we can see sort of a similar association as we work, we work our way down what we have. Uh, C over B would also be the cosecant of phi. And A over B would be the same ratio if we were to take the cotangent of phi. Okay, so that's an interesting, interesting little relationship. But well, we know something about the relationship between theta and phi. We know that theta plus phi has to equal 90 degrees. And we know this because these two angles are complementary. So this is where we get this idea of complementary functions or co-functions. The cosine and sine are co-functions because when you take the sine of an angle and the cosine of its complement, you get the exact same value. Um, another way that we're going to, I'm going to rewrite this just as we move on to the identities. If we were to solve this for phi, then what we end up with here is we, phi is going to be 90 degrees minus theta, or we could write it as pi over 2 minus theta. So theta and phi being complementary give us this relationship. This will also give us our co-function identities. So this just establishes the relationship that if we've got the, the cosine of theta, it's going to be equal to the sine of its complement. The sine is going to be equal to the cosine of its complement and we see the pattern repeat itself for the secant, the cosecant, the tangent, and, and the cotangent. This is how these co-functions co will work. So let's take a look at an example and see how these identities sort of, sort of play out. Let's say we looked at the sine of 30 degrees. Well, using the co-functions ident identities, we know that this is going to be equal to the cosine of something because they're co-functions and we're going to look at this this co-function identity so the sine of some angle is going to be equal to the cosine of its complement so the cosine now we've got radians for for the identity up here but this would be the same as the cosine of what's the complement of 30 degrees well it's going to be 90 degrees minus 30 degrees or the cosine of 60 degrees and again, we see that 30 and 60 are complementary because they sum up to 90. So both of these trig functions will, will end up having a value of, of 1 half in the end here. So that's kind of how this works. Let's take a look at a couple other ones. If we had the cosecant, say, of pi over 3, and we know that this is going to be equal to its cofunction, which is the secant, of some other angle. Now this angle is going to be the complement to pi over 3. So the secant of its complement, which would be pi over 2 minus pi over 3. So we're using, uh, we're using this identity right here. And we're going to have to do a little bit of work. So this is going to be the secant of, we find a common denominator, we've got 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6, which will give us the secant of pi over 6. And again, we see here that pi over 3 and pi over 6 are complementary angles, and their cofunctions will have the same value. So let's, uh, that's how these work. So why don't you guys try one as we, as we move on. So let's, let's consider this one.
so using the uh, the even and the odd identities. So let's go back. What I want you to do is I want you to find the exact value for all six trig functions. So cosine, sine, secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent uh, for all the functions evaluated at theta equals 5 pi over 6. So go ahead and use these even odd identities, evaluate all six trig functions at that angle, and, and see what you end up with. And we'll take a look at the answers in the next video.